Welcome to a noob's guide to Nakai the Wanderer. This is Nakai the Wanderer. Oh, hold on. Okay, there he is. This is Nakai the Wanderer. He travels the world in search of bubblegum and asses to kick, and there's no bubblegum in Warhammer. This gnarled Croxagore has spent a millennia meandering across Lustria like kin from Fist of the North Star, punching anybody his way so hard they explode, and then probably eating them because, you know, he's a walking crocodile. Croxagore are one of the core species of the Lizardmen, and, and like the Skinks, they're the bottom-rung laborers born to a life of toil and pseudo-slavery. But apparently Croxagores of the first spawning had a lower bullshit tolerance, because after his first battle, Nakai said balls to all of that and went on the lamb deciding to go on permanent walkabout, because there's only so many times you can tell a giant crocodile to go didgeridoo something before they didgeridon't. In Nakai's case, he was told to hold the Bridge of Stars against an invading Chaos army, and like the Viking at Stamford Bridge, he proved that numbers don't really count for much at choke points, and after three days of autoerotic asphyxiation, the Hordes of Chaos decided that maybe it was better to go be evil somewhere else, preferably far, far away from Nakai. Then, like all good action heroes, Nakai turned his back on the explosion and disappeared into the jungle, reappearing from it again only when a scrap of truly epic proportions is brewing. Sometimes the only warning an isolated Lizardman temple has of an impending attack is when this absolute unit is seen sunbathing outside the walls. Naturally armored from head to toe, Nakai's body is a patchwork of scars and golden trophies. Little thank yous hammered into his thick scales by grateful skinks for saving them at the 11th hour like some sort of scaly Gandalf. But when you rock balls as big as Carnosaurs, you can only slink off into the background unnoticed so many times. And now, though he fights alone, Nakai is saddled with a flying circus of followers and hangers-on, a literal horde of would-be worshippers and sycophants, piling into their hatchbacks to shadow his tour of cross-country destruction, pausing only long enough to bathe daily in Axe body spray, which makes Nakai the Lizardmen's only horde faction in the game. And since horde factions in Total War games have typically fared about as well as the US men's team in the World Cup, CA decided to mix it up a bit. Now you'll have one main horde that lets you construct ways to recruit units, and any additional armies will then steal from that one using the global recruitment tool. Think about it like the show The Walking Dead, where your other hordes, Fear the Walking Dead and Talking Dead, only exist so long as the original hype does. So it's a good thing Nakai is basically an immortal battering ram, but if you want to set a speed record for raw dogging Lustria, you can't be bothered by things like food, sleep, STDs, or building management. The defenders of the Great Plan sound like a third-rate cult, but as your personal pocket vassal faction, you just hand over any cities you conquer to them and they do the hard bits of day-to-day -day management. You just wander around and show up at the first of month for your cut of the cash. It lets you keep on rocking while your skink groupies follow in your way and clean up your sloppy seconds like those tiny fish that attach to the bottom of sharks that I can't be asked to look up the name of. Each city can then be refounded to a god of the old ones, with the left one giving you bonuses to douchey Saurus warriors, the middle one boosting virgin slan wizards, and the right one injecting even more steroids into the already chad croxagores. But if you are already smart enough to pick the alpha crocodile Nakai to play, it's really no contest which gods you back here. But as a hippy-dippy wandering horde faction, you you can't trade with anyone, since boxes labeled somewhere on the Amaxon River isn't exactly a location. That means to gain income, you'll need to loot, sack, eat, and teabag anything in your path. So I hope you bookmark the answers to this land puzzle boxes, because seriously, who designed these? You need Photoshop to find the answer. With yet another starting position in Lustria, you'll get sick of these things by the time you finish taking over the continent. But with a number of vacant ruins around, clearly absolutely not inhabited by rats, Batman, your start should be super easy. But on a Mortal Empires campaign, the guy typically dies around turn 15, because he starts way across the ocean on the foggy island of Albion. Nothing says home to a crocodile like year-round fog and rain, because, you know, one time the slan wizard Mazamundi thought it would be funny to zap Nakai across the ocean, make him fight in a battle royale to control the island, and then leave his ass there. Oh hey, look, Nakai wandered off again. I'm starting to think there's a pattern forming here. There comes a certain point when you have to accept not all who wander are lost, and they might just be avoiding you.
If you start a Vortex campaign though, he somehow managed to swim all the way back home again, and now has an army of conquistadors to deal with. Your campaign objective though is refreshingly straightforward. These four a-holes here are plundering your home. Go deal with them. And then when you've turned them into crocodile dung, do the same thing to their boss, Fuzzy Legolas. And to help you chew that suspiciously toned backside, you'll get a few new units to play with. Surprising no one, the Croxagore Lord gets new Croxagores. Except now they're sacred, which means they stole the gauntlet from Doomfist and Overwatch and then put them on both hands and banged them together so that they spark lightning. It's about impossible to describe these guys in PG-13 or less. With these sacred crocs, you've got monsters ready to charge in and put their fists so deep in the enemy, mm, nope. So they'll take both hands and spread those, you know what, forget it. You use sacred croxagores to charge in and pound the enemy until they can't take it anymore. How's that? Nakai then buffs the hell out of these guys and is meant to make an already powerful penetrator into the John Holmes special. And with new technology that gives fear and even more stats, you can trample whatever comes your way without bothering with things like strategy. But they do tend to get kited if you're not careful. So if you need to plink from range, the new Razor Dawn hunting pack looks like someone heard a vague description of a porcupine. I mean, they look cool, but they're not exactly riveting content. They're just salamanders with armor piercing. The unit everyone is excited about though is this behemoth, the Dread Saurian. It comes in two flavors, feral and one-man army. It's big, it has teeth, it munches things just like a carnosaur except at twice the size. The feral Dread Saurian is like someone asked an artist what's cooler than a T-Rex, and because that's impossible, they just drew a dragon. Well, Drake technically, because it doesn't have wings, and that's a fandom you do not want to rile. But the non-feral Dread Saurian is where it's at. It even gets a howda on its back. That's the word for the tiny house on the back of elephants. It comes from the Arabic word for bed carried by a camel, which comes from the American word for homeless and living out of your camel, but you don't want to admit it. Dread Saurians have all the teeth, plus some skinks with blowpipes on their backs, meaning you can stick these suckers in and basically let them go to town. And they don't rampage, which is the big drawback to Nakai's armies in general. Everything goes berserk and rampages. So in his campaign, it's a matter of pulling a Mike Tyson and biting as many people as possible before they stop you. I mean, it kind of blows that Nakai doesn't get any buffs to Dread Saurians, but he's meant to elevate Croxagores out of the suck, so you can't really blame him. And you know you're in a good place when giant man-eating crocodiles are your least interesting unit. I mean, they're two-ton murder machines with a finishing move called the Death Roll. But Croxagores have always gotten the short end of the lore stick in Warhammer. I mean, they're described as oversized, dim-witted brutes. And the new ancient Croxagore general unit is ruffling feathers online because suddenly people believe you can't just be a strong idiot and lead an army. Though somehow this doesn't apply to the likes of Lu Bu, Achilles, Ajax, or insert your favorite world leader here. The real problem here is that Warhammer lore is sometimes dumb and nobody wants to admit it. And I can't really blame CA for wanting to change it. The best example I can give is that the Lizardmen temples are, and I kid you not, giant stone spaceships. And the Lizardmen themselves are all clones who generate from a BS primordial goop matrix that they stole from the crappy Superman origin story of the 1980s which basically means that the spawning pools of the lizard men work like the hot tubs in the Playboy Mansion, teeming with life and overflowing with DNA. I can only guess that Games Workshop went with this because actual lizard procreation is too graphic for delicate English sensibilities. See, lizards have not one, but two semi-wangs, meaning they can inflate them from inside their bodies and go from zero to threesome in less time than it takes you to say censored. So instead, they now spawn fully formed from magic pools, and implying otherwise would violate the Great British Firewall and threaten to throw society into such a tizzy not seen since that one time Reginald forgot to offer biscuits at tea and I just know it was because of what Aunt Deidre said about his Timothy last week. Or maybe lizard men are like trout and they can only breed in their own birthplace. I, I don't know. This is a world where dinosaurs can teleport and chainmail bikinis count as armor. But this DLC finally makes Croxagores the feared ambush predator they were always meant to be, and Nakai himself an inhuman incarnation of the wrath of the jungle, charging out from the green death with perfect vigor for himself and his army when he gets his golden tributes. Nakai proves not only that CA doesn't hate lizardmen, but they are in fact their favorite faction and are shown disgusting amounts of favoritism. 
But should you play as Nakai? Well, if you're given a fresh hot apple pie, do you want to slam your face into it and go to town? If so, Nakai's your croc, Sigur. Okay, there he goes again. I feel like that one was my fault. That was one pun too many. Anywho, thanks for watching, and Nakai is available as part of the Hunter and the Beast DLC for Warhammer 2, releasing on September 11th. Can somebody put a LoJack on this guy? Jesus.